So John, how do you feel the project's gone? George, I think it's gone really good. We've been very lucky to have um, three years worth of research that we've undertaken on the smart irrigation and automation. Uh, obviously water and labour are two of the big components that we've got within the system. So obviously once you move to smart sensing and automation, there's a potential there to save water. Uh, that can vary depending on where you are within the system and what your current practices are but we're seeing water savings there within the project around things like being able to more easily implement delayed permanent water and also better control of water um, if you happen to pond in a traditional rice system. Uh, we've got commercial partners that have been involved with the project right from the start so what we've been able to do is develop smart sensing technology that's uh, linked to the automation that's available off the shelf now. So one of our commercial partners and you can see some of their equipment here, Padman Automation, uh, they've been involved with the project and they're now on selling um, the infrastructure that allows you to do smart sensing and automation. One of the other things we're seeing I think that's also uh, pretty interesting as well is that it opens up the automation new opportunities within rice growing systems. Uh, so for instance on some of our other project sites uh, we're looking at things like aerobic rice uh, where we're actually trying to grow rice without permanent ponded water and having some, some big water savings in those environments as well. So it opens up the automation uh, water savings, labour savings, but also opportunities to do things that we couldn't in the past just due to the high labour costs. Yep. Okay, George, it's been interesting, I think, with the work that you've done around the economics. You know, obviously we're here at a farm, we've got about six hectare bays here behind us. Just wondering if you could give us, you know, a bit of an indication of what your thoughts were around the economics and the effects of different bay sizes on the economics of smart sensing and automation. Yeah, yeah, so we looked at bay sizes ranging from about three hectares up to 12 hectares. So I guess six hectares is putting it in the, the middle. And we found that the upfront costs ranged from about just under $300 a hectare for the larger bay sizes uh, up to about $700 a hectare for small bay sizes. Uh, so there is a, you know, there's a big price difference there because it's all based on the, the number of auto winches that you're putting in. But at the same time, your benefits are also affected by the bay sizes as well. So for, across all but all those bay sizes, we still found that there was at least a 9% rate of return just on labour savings or up to 19% with labour and water savings. And that's pretty consistent across all the bay sizes. So you can get a payback of less than six years for this sort of technology. That looks pretty good, I think, from an investment perspective. And that's just focusing just on the labour savings with that return? The 9% return would be just labour savings, but the ability to step it up to 19%, and that's just looking at a 1% water saving, but other industries have shown that it could be as high as 20%, so there's huge potential for upside on the investment just from adding those water savings on top of labour savings. I mean, definitely from our experience on the research side of things, those water savings can, can definitely be much higher than 1%. Obviously, it's it's pretty um, individual farm dependent, yeah. but um, yeah, I, I think definitely in some situations on high water use areas, you know, it could be into the high teens very easily. So yeah. in those situations, you'd expect a much quicker return uh, payback period then. Yeah, and it's also going to depend. We only looked at the rice production itself. It's going to depend on your rotation cropping as well. So if you've got a follow-up crop that you um, you're irrigating that. You know, like what's happening in you know these fields, looking for a follow-up crop, then that's going to add to your savings as well, depending on how uh, intensive it is with the irrigation, water, and labour requirement. But that's going to generate additional returns on the investments. There's certainly yeah plenty of upside from uh, what we looked at as a probably the base and conservative scenario. Yeah. So when you take into consideration, you know, you've got not only your savings from your summer crop, like you mentioned, that's got the six year payback period. If you also then take that, if you are irrigating any winter crop, yep. you've got those benefits. Um, the other functionality too, like you mentioned, these winchings are portable. Yep. So, you know, we can take those to other fields. And then the opportunity that, you know, these drop in inserts, the various different um, winches, door configurations we've been able to automate, 
I think that you know gives a lot of potential there to um, to be able to have the technology over different cropping systems within the rice um, based environment, and then also those low payback time frames yep. uh, make it very attractive for growers. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the upfront cost is yeah pretty versatile as well, depending on what systems you've already got in place, and it's very much sort of a it's flexible in terms of how it integrates with your own system. I think one of the things that um, I think has been good is you know being able to work with a commercial partner like Padman to be able to have the technology that growers can now go and buy off the shelf. We've got yep. the smart sensing uh, within field and then linked to the auto winches. Yep. The other thing I think too is you can see here we've actually got a couple of cobwebs and some spiders on these units. So we've actually been out here for, for three years at this site. Um, three irrigation seasons and it holding up really well. So I think that's um, really encouraging as well that we've got a, a package there that's being developed that um, that's going to be robust for growers and also economically viable. Yeah. So I think you know moving into the future as we become more water constrained, you know I think this automation technology has a big future. Yeah, certainly.